What's up guys, Big Ape 93 here today, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Monday Night Raw review for last night's episode. Before we get too far into this, I just want to give you guys a friendly reminder that if you are at a live event, please do not rust the ring because there's been too much of that going on lately. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into this. There were two main focuses on last night's episode of Raw, that being the Finn Balor and Seth Rollins feud and the Roman Reigns vs. Rusev feud. We kicked off Raw this week with a promo that Seth Rollins had recorded earlier in the day talking about how he was going to be the winner at SummerSlam and become the first ever Universal Champion, and after that... We got the main theme for the night, which was Seth Rollins searching the arena for the Demon King. After the promo by Seth Rollins, we cut to the ring where we get Rusev and Lana that come out, and they basically hold the show hostage because Rusev doesn't think Roman Reigns deserves the title shot at SummerSlam and that he wants to defend Lana's honor. Which basically leads to the giant opening segment where Roman, Mick, and Stephanie come out. I don't remember what order they all came out in, but Stephanie basically told Rusev that he needed to act better than that. Which the segment led into our main event for the night, which up until they actually did the match, I did not think they were going to do the match that they had Sunday for the U.S. title on Raw before the pay-per-view which made no sense, but we'll get into that later. As it was the go-home show to SummerSlam, not a lot happened, so what are you going to do there? But it's not like we expected much to happen before the pay-per-view. The opening match, if I remember right, was Sheamus versus Sami Zayn, and it was an okay match for what it was, with Cesaro being at ringside. I mean, we all knew how that was going to end, right? That match happened, and it was okay, and as far as Sami Zayn goes, I'm not for sure what his plans are for the SummerSlam card. I'm sure he's probably going to get thrown onto the pre-show, as WWE does. But as far as Cesaro and Sheamus goes, for some reason, starting at SummerSlam, we're going to get a Best of Seven series between those two. After that, I believe we got some more banter between the New Day and the Anderson and Gallows feud where the New Day beat the Dudley Boys and then we got another Doctor segment promo from Anderson and Gallows. Also thrown in here was the uh, Nia Jax versus the local talent feud that has been going on every week where she um, basically just kills the local person in a squash match. Also going on around this time is we get another video backstage of Seth Rollins looking for the demon and he runs into Neville and Neville basically tells him that he has no idea what he's in store for. Then after that we come back from commercial, we get the uh, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman segment for the night which was okay at best. To me, Brock is not just that much of a hype anymore. Paul starts doing the normal promo, my client this, my client that, suplex city this, suplex city that, and then for some reason, Heath Slater comes out and interrupts the segment. Heath is talking about how they told him he could get a uh, contract for Monday Night Raw if he beat the Beast Brock Lesnar in a one-on-one -on -one match that night. And the segment goes about how you would think, except for one major thing here, something that rarely ever happens with Brock. They gave Brock a mic, and he actually said words. Words came out of his mouth. And basically the whole point of that was just to hype up the Orton versus Lesnar match this Sunday at SummerSlam. So if that got you hyped for it, I guess that's good for them. So that happened, and then let's see, what else happened? They had uh, Big Cass versus Kevin Owens to get the uh, hype on for uh, Cass and Enzo versus Jericho, as they're calling it now. It was an okay match, really. Not much happened. Didn't really change the status quo because it ended in DQ, so they're saving that up for SummerSlam. So hopefully that'll be a really good match. Let's see, what else did we get? We had the uh, one-time reunion of the primetime players versus the Shining Stars. Don't know how they're still around. And what happened basically was Darren accidentally knocked Titus off the apron. Uh, Titus came in and slammed him and then left. And the Shining Stars got a victory on Raw. Go figure. 
Now, as far as Titus and Darren go, if I had to guess, I would say that some point during this week or Sunday night, they're going to add that to the pre-show card. Somewhere worked in there was an okay match that didn't last very long between Neville and Zender Mahal, and Neville got the win, so that's good. After that, we get a uh, little segment with uh, Seth Rollins checking the GM office to see if the Demon King's in there, and McFoley's like, this wouldn't be a place for a Demon King. He says, I'm going to give you one chance to go out to the ring, and why don't you call him out there? So, Seth goes out to the ring, starts his promo, and right before Finn comes out, someone runs into the uh, ring and tries to, I, I don't know what they were trying to accomplish, but the camera cuts him off just slightly, so you know how WWE is, when someone tries to go into the ring, they like to cut the camera off. And in a move that really baffled me and a lot of people I've talked to, they had the Demon Balor come out on Raw for some reason. Go figure, right? Now, as far as everyone I've talked to about that, the only thing we can see being the reasoning for that is that a lot of the uh, portion of the Raw audience doesn't watch NXT on the network, so they have no idea who the character is, and it would be a nice way to introduce him for the first time. And even then, it didn't really accomplish much as the two were only in the ring for maybe a minute or two. Then they started fighting, and Finn got the upper hand. Then Seth just kind of ran away. The only other relevant thing that happened on Raw, other than the women setting up their feud, where we had Dana Brooke distract Shasa and Charlotte attacked her, was, like I said earlier, they had the Roman Reigns versus Rusev match that we're getting Sunday on Raw for some reason, and until it happened, I did not know that they were actually going to go through with it. We had the main event, which they spent a good 20 to 30 minutes on a match we're going to get this Sunday at SummerSlam, and that still baffles me as to why they did it, where Roman got the win, and it was a good match for the most part, and I'm not sure how they're going to top it Sunday. And that's about all we got for this week's Raw. It was your typical go-home show for a pay-per-view. It tried to hype it up more, and I'm not sure what we're going to get. Sunday, SummerSlam could go one of two ways. It could go really good, or have really okay matches with some really bad ones. As far as this Raw goes, I'd give it somewhere between a 6 and a 7. It didn't really accomplish much, but it did what it was supposed to do, and the fact that they used the Demon King on Raw, and they also gave away your match Sunday a week before the pay-per-view. But that's about all I have for you guys this week on the Raw Review. As always, thanks for watching. If you guys liked what you saw here today, drop a like on the video and please subscribe if you wouldn't mind. And let me know down in the comments below if you guys are going to be watching SummerSlam and if you guys enjoyed this episode of Raw. And if you guys want to keep up with everything else geek related I've been keeping up with, you can follow me on Twitter or you can like my Facebook page. And as always, you guys have a lovely day.